everyone. This is Dana Brendenberger. I'm here at the Ava Gardner Museum. And I'm here with Todd Johnson, who is the executive director of the Johnston County Heritage Center in downtown Smithfield. And we've invited him here today because uh, not only was he the previous director of the Ava Gardner Museum and uh, also the estate trustee, um, but he uh, it works closely with genealogy, and I know that there's a lot of interest in Ava and uh, people who are related to Ava, including some folks who think that they may uh, have a relation to Ava. They're interested in tuning in on this. So uh, Todd is an expert on that, and he is here to talk a little bit about what he does and um, to give you a little bit of insight on Ava. So welcome, Todd. Well, thank you. It's good to be back in familiar surroundings. <laughs> Um, yes, the Johnston County Heritage Center is primarily a um, place where you can learn about family history and local history. We have uh, the subscription to Ancestry.com that people can use um, at, on our computers in our facility. And so um, we have a, a good bit of ethic, a lot of interest in uh, Ancestry for North Carolina and Virginia. When I was director of the Ava Museum uh, a little over three years ago, I started working on Ava's genealogy and we did a workshop called um, Ava and her kissing cousins or something like that. And, <laughs> and we had uh, probably 50 or 60 people who came to a little workshop at the library down the street and a lot of them were cousins or they suspected they were cousins and they wanted to know more about her uh, family background. So um, that's kind of where all this started. That was three years ago um, when I was heavy into this research. So I'm a little cold on a lot of these facts, but I do have the files and hopefully <laughs> if somebody has a question, I'll do my best to answer off the top of my head. If I don't know for sure, I can go into these files. So. Now you yourself have are from a family that's been in the area for 300 years, right? Yes, my um, ancestors were some first settlers in this area in the 1750s so we've we've been around yeah there you go so yeah. th you are really the best person to be digging through this stuff and well, you understand and, how it works and <laughs> Ava's uh, ancestors were um, among the first settlers of North Carolina in fact her ancestors came to North Carolina way before mine did oh wow okay so they were they were here in the you know probably by the early 1700s when this was just a vast wilderness her ancestors were some of the first people to come and settle here now not in Johnston County. They mainly settled in what is now Pitt County, the Greenville area where East Carolina University is located, um, Edgecombe County, that's where Tartar is located, and Wilson, that area. Yeah, I knew that they had, I think her dad had come down from, from the Rocky Mount area, is that right, to begin with? or Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah Rocky Mount is split between Edgecombe and Nash okay. counties, but yeah, her, her folks came from mostly Pitt County, Edgecombe County, and Wilson County. And then her parents came to Johnston County a little over 100 years ago, before, okay. just before she was born. And I, I knew I was supposed to turn this thing off. <laughs> All right. Uh, when I was here, when I was preparing for this workshop, I um, put together a little PowerPoint uh, on Ava's family. It's called Ava's Notable Kin. Um, and I thought it would be kind of interesting to just run through that. Yeah, we're very interested. She had a witch in her family that was quite famous, and she's got some interesting characters that uh, you, you probably haven't read about in any anything that's available, so very excited to hear it. One um, kind of, and I hate to start off on this note, but um, <laughs> one kind of um, sad thing that I found out in, in doing the research and talking to distant cousins of Ava's on the gardener side of the family um, was that uh, Huntington's disease uh, ran in the gardener side of the family. Uh, several branches of the gardeners um, have been diagnosed with Huntington since that disease was identified in the 90s. It was mm -hmm. not even identified until after Ava died. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, but her um, grandfather, let's say her grandfather gardener, had several siblings whose descendants um, have uh, Huntington's disease. And I've often wondered if maybe um, that was something that Ava suffered from and, and just was not aware. What are and, the symptoms of Huntington's well, for I, everyone that doesn't know? Yeah, um, it, a lot of people don't know what Huntington's is. And I, I actually, well, I guess relatively new within the last 20, 25 it, years. Yeah, so. it's, and a lot of people still don't <clears throat> don't know what it is. Um, I'm going to read this. This, sure. this came off an official uh, website, the Huntington's Disease Society of America. His website. Uh, is a, it is a fatal genetic disorder that causes the progressive breakdown of nerve cells in the brain, deteriorates a person's physical and mental abilities during their prime working years, and has no cure. 
It's known as the quintessential family disease because every child or parent with HD has a 50-50 chance of carrying the faulty gene. And what's interesting is that um, a lot of people who have this, they have um, inexplicable um, bouts of depression, hmm. which Ava did suffer from. She admitted that. Um, and also, most people who have Huntington's will eventually die of pneumonia. Interesting. Or some, it affects the, the respiratory system. And her father um, also died of, of pneumonia as well. And, and I understand complications from pleurisy, from, from what Mary Edna was right. telling me. But her father also suffered from bouts of depression. Yeah. And uh, he seemed to be a very, based on what I've heard and, and read, was a very congenial man. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved him. And, um, you know, why would he, you know, have... have of course, he went through the, the Great Depression in that Which year. Which was depressing to anyone, and by, that, by yes, definition. <laughs> absolutely. But um, anyway, it just it does raise that question. Now, I'm not aware of any other um, members in, in Ava's direct line uh, who had Huntington's, but she has quite a few cousins. In fact, uh, right. some physicians from Duke actually had a meeting, I understand, with some of the Gardner relatives in Wilson a number of years ago. And they've done a study of that branch of the family. Um, so there's, it's interesting. Her grandfather on the Gardner side had similar problems. He um, actually died in the state mental hospital in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. uh, before Ava was born, uh, her sister Elsie May, and a this was a, something that Ava recalled many years later, she said her sister Elsie May as a little girl remembered going with her father to visit an old man in a locked facility. And she was never told who the old man was, but as she grew up, uh, and learn more about her grandfather, she, you know, realized, I think that was my grandfather we visited that day. <clears throat> and right. um, they had to go, you know, behind locked doors um, to visit him. And, you know, it was his siblings who had, uh, who passed that gene along. So one has to wonder yeah. if, you know, if, if that was, was prevalent. So, Interesting. Um, but, um, yeah, the um, Gardner family goes uh, back, we, we can only trace them back to the early 1700s, but they seem to have uh, maybe settled in Middlesex County, Virginia in the 1600s. So oh, they were some of, the, some of the earliest settlers in, um, in colonial America. And um, That's much further back than, than most people can track, so I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the, the um, key links in Ava's genealogy was a family Bible that just happened to show up at a, an antique deal shop in Wilson a number of years ago. He didn't know what to do with the Bible. It wasn't his family, and a lady popped in one day and you know told him that she had heard about that he had his Bible, and she was from up north somewhere. And uh, anyway, he sold her the Bible for twenty dollars or something like that, <laughs> and it had all of the family uh, births and deaths and marriages dating way back to, into the 1700s. And oh it was all goodness. Ava's family. Luckily, somebody had made a copy of the family record, so we do have the information, which was key. But we have no idea where that Bible got to. It, oh, would, be, it would be nice to track it down. Certainly so, would. Um, maybe the person who bought it one day will come back. To or maybe they're listening to this uh, this Facebook well, session. Well, wouldn't here. that be nice? Yes. <laughs> We'd um, love to have it at the museum. Yeah, it would be a nice thing to loan to the museum or donate. <laughs> Even better yet. Yes. Uh, it's um, a, a great resource. Let's see. Uh, I want to go uh, back to Ava's immediate family. Her, her father's name was Jonas Bailey Gardner. And his father was James Bailey Gardner, so the uh, Bailey name has been carried through. And then her mother's name was Mary Elizabeth Baker, called Molly. Molly is often a nickname. Molly or Molly, her nickname's for, for Mary. Mm -hmm. And they married in 1903, about 20 years before Ava was born. And uh, were from the Edgecombe, Wilson County area, or Pitt. Uh, but they came to Johnston County. They found out about some land that was available for sale, and they wanted to seek their fortune in Johnston. County in the Brogdon community in the early 1900s. So they packed up everything, and their uh, his mother and uh, sister Ava, who Ava was named for, and the family all. And there were I think three little girls at the time, and they all got on the wagon and came to uh, Smithfield, and that's where they settled, and that's where Ava did a good bit of her growing up. Mm -hmm. So they maintained their family ties. Uh, they had a lot of family in Fountain, North Carolina, which. I think is near the Edgecombe Pitt County line. It's in Pitt County, uh, and that's where little Raymond uh, uh, is buried. Uh, anyone who's visited the cemetery here, mm -hmm. visited his grave, you, uh, one of the first things you notice is uh, Raymond's uh, stone, uh, a very ornate little stone from over a hundred years ago. Uh, he was a little bit older than 
Ava. In fact, he died a, a number of years before, before Ava she, was born. Mm -hmm. Um, but I actually have the, um, I think this would, would be of interest. I did find the uh, notice in the local paper. Uh, when, of the obituary? When, when Raymond died. It oh, was how on interesting. The, it was on the front page of the, of the paper, um, the Smithfield Herald, February 24, 1911. Uh, Dynamite kills a child. On Monday of this week, a distressing accident occurred at the home of Mr. Jonas Gardner in Boone Hill Township. Now, they don't mention anything about Molly. The heartbroken mother. But, uh -huh. um, it was, that, that was 1911. <laughs> Women couldn't even vote. vote. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say. Um, some dynamite had been bought for blasting purposes. Uh, they were blasting old stumps. They were clearing fields and, and trying to clear away uh, tree stumps. Uh, and a little of it was swept into a fire where little Raymond, the three-year-old child of Miss Garden, was standing. The dynamite exploded and injured the child so badly about the stump that an operation was considered important. The child was taken to Rex Hospital at Raleigh, where an operation was performed Monday evening with the hope of saving its life, not his life, but its life. <laughs> uh, the pieces of the dynamite were removed, and it was at first thought that the little sufferer would recover, but the injuries sustained were too serious, and it passed away Tuesday morning. How interesting. It's like they are trying to detach the sentimentality from, from him being yeah. a child, you know, I think that that's... Uh, I know, a lot of times we refer to little newborn babies as it, it. but uh, it's, it's a he or a she. It's a How person. Interesting. It is a little person. Uh, but he, uh, you know, the gardeners had not been here uh, very long, and all of their family connections were in Fountain and, you know, Wilson area, and so the um, little Raymond was taken to the Baker, or a family cemetery near Fountain, that's mm -hmm. where he was buried, and uh, the, the marker and a little bit of the ground, just a cere ceremonial scoop of dirt uh, from his grave was moved to the gardener plot here in Smithfield. Uh, I heard that his body ago. was too decomposed to, to really... Right, well, after all that time. Uh, yeah. that, all that time. Right. But, but his marker is here so that he can be part of that family plot. Right. Yeah, right. And uh, it's it said that um, Jonas and Molly never really recovered from that that sadness um, that, yeah. that happened. Being the parent of three children, I can't imagine what that would be like. No. And I'm very grateful that I've never had to go through anything yeah. like that. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a very traumatic. Well, thing how interesting though that you were able to find the um, the article in. I mean, all the way back to 1911. This is why historical museums and archives are really important, folks. I mean, this is stuff that you you can't get online all the time, and it's 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 becoming a lost art. I feel like we're moving towards digitization. I mean, we bring you daily pictures of Ava, and um, you know, some some people still come to the museum, which is fantastic. But a lot of people look for the things online and and uh, don't really have a goal of coming, but you, you miss out on some really key things, and I think that that's a fantastic example of uh, why you should um, definitely especially support your local museums. Well, one thing I want to do is read through. I have these little charts um, that I've done um, on Ava's family tree as far back as it would go. I think it might be interesting uh, just to hear the different surnames. They're all pretty much British surnames, yeah, okay. we think. Um, uh, Ava's nephew did a, a DNA study on the like the female line, the mitochondrial line, okay. which is like mother's 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 mother on back. Mm -hmm. And um, some of his closest matches were German, so she may, may have some German um, ancestry as well. But um, of course, Gardner uh, Bats B A T T S is a of, of her family names that shows up a couple of times, and I think it's on the Bats side of the family that she may be related to. Um, um, Winstead. Oh, um, Mary Elizabeth Mary Winstead, Elizabeth who's an actress. Winstead, the, the actress, right. Um, they, uh, Ms. Winstead does claim Ken Ava, and we think it's on the Bats side of the family. And she's from Rocky Mount, to note, uh, Mary yeah, Elizabeth. Her parents were, yeah. right, right. So. Uh, Jordan is another family name. Uh, Dilda, sometimes spelled with a Y on the end, Dilda Day, or Dildy. Uh, her, her name, Ava, comes from uh, her great great grandmother Ava, or A V. it was spelled in the old records, A V. A.V. Dildy, we don't know um, Ava's or A.V.'s uh, maiden name, but she married Jesse Dildy. Um, Cobb, Cherry, Baker, Barnes, Forbes, Webb, Harold, those are some of the surnames in her background. So okay. if you have those names in your background, maybe you can do it. Maybe can, and you might want to come down and look at your genealogy next time you're in, in downtown Smithfield. <laughs> right, right. How neat. Wonderful. Right. Um, well, you know, you said most of them were British. There could be some German. Ava always referred to herself as a strong Scotch-Irish uh, girl. And then there's some r 
of rumors that have abounded that she could possibly have some uh, Native American. Um, right. And then there are some accounts which I think we, we don't really um, believe are, are accurate that she might have some African American mixed in. Is that right? right. Well, um, the gardeners uh, who first came to North Carolina did settle in the area, uh, it's called Bertie County, near Windsor, North Carolina. It's an area where the Tuscarora people had a reservation in the 18th century, early 19th century. Uh, there was a war between the colonists and the Tuscarora and that ended in about, I think, 1713, 1714. And that's the time where her, when her ancestors settled in this area. Most of the ones who um, were not killed or sold into slavery, they were sent to, a, uh, or ended up leaving the state, and they ended up in uh, the Buffalo, New York area, and they have a reservation. They joined the Iroquois Confederation. Hmm. And there were, um, there was a, a fairly large group of Tuscarora who had intermarried with colonists with whites and blacks too, we're pretty sure, uh, and they stayed. They were allowed to, to reign because they were related by blood to the colonists. So they were given this reservation in Bertie County, and the gardeners did live very close to that reservation. It is certainly possible that, that, uh, both that, that, one, of the, that, yeah. right, that, that one of the gardeners uh, could have married someone from the Tuscarora reservation. Interesting. So it's certainly possible, but there's almost no way to prove that. They just did not leave much of a paper trail. Um, they assimilated into the, you know, the European culture. They, you know, basically lost a lot of their, their Native American identity. And, um, they were certainly not identified as such, especially if they um, uh, had intermarried with whites. They were just listed as white in the, in the record. Okay, interesting. Right. Um, let's see, let me move forward here. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, or do we have any questions? Well, it's a little difficult to see right now because it's only displaying on Oh, okay. That this is our first time on Facebook Live, guys, so we're not really used to the way that the, um, the uh, questions are displaying. Um, so if, uh, go ahead and keep commenting, but um, it's going to take us a moment to go back and, and look at, at everything. Um, and we'll go ahead and let Todd talk first and, and kind of have a little chat session, and then we'll make sure to take your questions um, as, soon as, as soon as we go through that. If you can just remain patient as we're, as we're getting used to this new format here. I do hope that more people are able to tune in this way. I know that um, a lot of people said they were having an issue with Periscope. So if you um, are able to tune in, thank you so much. Much. And, and if you aren't, uh, we will hopefully get this up on, on YouTube as well so that people can enjoy it. And you can certainly email questions later on. Um, her aunt, Ava, this was uh, her father's sister, Ava Virginia Gardner Ware State. She married twice. Oh, and, my gosh. Um, okay. That's a uh, she lived from 1880 to 1963. And um, this was uh, from an interview with Ava that was done. Uh, in, in the late 80s, she said, Aunt Ava lived in the house with us when I was a child. She would read the Bible to me all the time. She loved her Bible, but it didn't rub off on me at all. Poor Aunt Ava, nothing she tried with me stuck. She tried to teach me to knit and to sew. That didn't work. She tried to teach me to be a lady and not be such a tomboy, and that didn't work. <laughs> eventually, she just gave up. Well, <laughs> um, Aunt Ava uh, eventually did marry twice, and uh, in her later life, she converted to Mormonism. And as you know, um, uh, part of the LDS church, uh, the faith of, of Mormons, it, uh, involves genealogical research. So it's my understanding that Aunt Ava either did research or had someone help her with or hired someone uh, to do research on her genealogy. I have not been able to get my hands on the material that she may have assembled um, maybe it's in Salt Lake City or somewhere oh, gosh, in Utah yeah. in the mountain out there. But, um, I've you know, had a list of things and I haven't gotten around to it yet, but uh, to try to track down uh, Aunt Ava's uh, research material. So we, we may have more, more to, to reveal do. later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because she was certainly closer to the, the older generations and would have had access to, to more of the, the information maybe. Of course, computers and you know, internet, all this has opened up a whole world of Absolutely. information that um, people just didn't have access to back in the 60s when they were doing, doing research. Mm -hmm. um, her grandfather, Gardner, as I said, um, was a, he was a Civil War soldier. He was in the Confederate cavalry. He was married twice. His first wife was Penina Batts, and they had... Um, uh, some children, and then second wife uh, was Mary Elizabeth Dilda, and um, her mother's name was Matilda, 
So a lot of people get a real <laughs> chuckle when they see the family tree and they see that she had a great grandma, grandmother named Matilda Dilda. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> it just rolls off the tongue now. <laughs> uh, but her grandparents divorced prior to 1900. That wow, was, that, that must was, have been scandalous. That was yeah. almost unheard of in the 19th century, but it, it did happen. Um, but he had, um, he had some dementia, some mental issues. He was abusive. And, and he was a so drinker, too, I remember he, her he saying. He was an alcoholic. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, you know, he had siblings with the heirs that had the Huntington's disease. So I'm just wondering if maybe he was afflicted by that as well. Well, and going just through war, no you know, with the shell shock, and, uh, and I'm sure, you know, that, that played a part in, right. in that. And they uh, didn't really deal with it the way that we do today. We can yeah. only imagine the things that he saw um, when he was serving in, during the Civil War. And yeah. he fought in this area, and our area was particularly contentious, wasn't it, with all the Civil War history that we have here? Well, um, in this area, there were um, a, a good number of pro-Union people as well as um, red secessionists. So, <laughs> yeah, there was a good bit of internal conflict in, in this area um, over that whole issue of, of secession. Right. Uh, but uh, Mr. Bailey is said to be buried in an unmarked grave in Maplewood Cemetery, Wilson, but he did die. Uh, he was committed to the State Mental Hospital in Raleigh. Um, about a year before he died in 1913, so he died, you know, long before Ava was, was born. born. Why, why would right. they, why would they put him in an unmarked grave? Is it because of his mental issues? Well, you know, he was probably uh, maybe had very few family members who, um, you know, were, were close to him. Mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't so put in the effort. They to... just right, I guess oh. maybe. They just didn't, just well, I know for that whatever reason, decided not to mark his grave. Yeah, sometimes with a mental issue, they become undesirable, and families will detach from them. I'm kind right. of wondering if that mm -hmm. might have been the think. social, not necessarily the, the sensitivity factor, but it might have been the social moray at the time. You would you would become desensitized to that, I don't know. Right. Interesting. And it could have been economic reasons. Oh, um, yeah. They, they were made, not wealthy. You know, <laughs> right. So um, maybe that had something to do with it. She had an uncle, um, well, this was um, James Bailey Gardner, her grandfather's uncle. His name was Wiley Jordan Batts, lived from 1819 to 1902. Uh, he was a well-to-do farmer and justice of the peace in Wilson County, uh, one of the earliest property owners in the town of Wilson before the Civil War, uh, staunch primitive Baptist who was... Um, excluded for espousing free will Baptist views. Um, for those of you who know the difference between Arminians and Calvinists, uh, the primitives were the uh, Calvinists and the uh, free will Baptists were the uh, Arminians. So, um, but anyway, he, he was a primitive Baptist <laughs> of sorts. Um, he was a well-known, uh, most well-known uh, as a botanic physician in Wilson County, and he left a wonderful little book of remedies, uh, which is at the Country Doctor Museum in, oh, in Bailey, North Carolina. Uh, these are some of the receipts, and this is the way they spelled it, R-E-C-I-E, C-E-I, -E -E, excuse me, P-T-S, um, recipes, if you will, but that's what they call recipes, receipts. Uh, he had one for making bitters, one for uh, consumpted coughs. Consumption, of course, was tuberculosis. Uh, bowel diseases, bilious flux, gravel, and I'm not 100% sure what, what that is. Yeah. Um, kidney stones, maybe? Yeah. Um, children's bowel diseases, typhoid, wounds in the back. <laughs> wounds in the back? Maybe. If you're shot in the back, he could help you, I guess. Or, or bed sores, maybe? Uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, ointments. Uh, <laughs> this one is, is particularly interesting. Maybe I can lay my hands on it. It's filed away somewhere. But uh, he had an Indian remedy for seated pains. Um, it, it involved alcohol, of course. Okay. <laughs> uh, rheumatism, falling of the womb, gonorrhea, R-E-A-R, yes. Uh, midwifery, life-restoring drops, sore throats, uh, S-O-A-R. Spelling was not their thing back in, in the not, 19th yeah. century. <laughs> and flowing of the female. So he had remedies for all of these maladies, and uh, and he kept them in a little book, and we have a little book, or the, the Country Doctor Museum in Bailey, North Carolina. Oh, Nash County has, has the little book. Yeah, and our friend Jenny is the executive director over there. You may have seen us promoting Country Doctor oh, yeah. Museum before. We, we said if you were interested in finding out how uh, Country Doctor, how medicine was handled in Ava's community, it's one of the last places you can actually see what a 
hospital would have looked like and, and the old um, equipment. They have medicines. I mean, it's incredible. They even have a, a garden, a botanical garden with all of these plants. And, and so they do a lot of work out there. It's really beautiful. If you get a chance, mm -hmm. it's a short drive from here. It's about an hour away. It's great. Well, it's, I, I just thought it was kind of interesting That's that, he, that he had this uh, <laughs> it, this Indian remedy um, for, for pain yeah. uh, medication. Uh, and it most very, of it involves alcohol, though. <laughs> well, it, it was no, it was different roots and herbs and okay. things like that. But um, he, you know, uh, it just makes one wonder if there's not some Indian background in the family. Yeah. It, and maybe that was a remedy that was just handed down in the family. How who, interesting. Who knows? Okay. Um, we'll never prove that either. Uh, and I know she mentioned earlier, Deanna mentioned earlier about um, the the Bell Witch or the Witch Avis family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the Bats uh, uncles left this area and moved to Robertson County, Tennessee in about 1805. Um, let's see. Yeah, it was the uncle of Cynthia Bass, Bats Gardner and great uncle of James Bailey. So it would have been Ava's great, great, great uncle, uh, Frederick Bats. And he moved with the family to Tennessee, and uh, his wife, uh, her name was Katie. We don't, I don't think we know her maiden, maiden name, but um, uh, the legend is that um, her poltergeist or her spirit um, haunted the John Bell family. And um, so that's why she's called the Bell Witch. <laughs> and there have been movies made about the Bell really? Witch. Really? Uh, An American Haunting is one. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, that was done recently. Uh, let's see, John Bell and Jeremiah Batts, Mary's sisters, Benjamin Batts, sued John Bell over a slave sale. Uh, those were the records we, we were able to find. But um, anyway, supposedly Aunt Katie was a witch. Batts was the Bell witch <laughs> Tennessee. I wonder if Ava, if this ever came back to her family and if she was ever aware of some of this, you know, this I'm, more fun history here. I, I'm not sure. I kind of doubt it, but I... I, maybe she was aware of it. I think this a lot of this information came out a little bit later. This research has been done um, in the last 25 yeah. or 30 years. And a lot of it by you. Let's give credit where credit is due. Well, and a lot of the gardener research um, has been done by my friend uh, Tracy Thompson, oh, who's wonderful. the genealogy and local history librarian at the uh, uh, Brazil Library in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And she has, has done a good bit of research and has been very liberal in sharing her information with me. Oh, she participated in a workshop we did on Ava's Ken uh, three years ago. So she deserves a lot of a lot of credit. credit yes, thank for you. A, a lot of this <laughs> research. Let's see. Um, move on here. Edie Jordan, uh, Edith Flowers, wife of Joshua, Joshua Jordan. Uh, let's see. She died in 1835. She was a slave owner. Several of Ava's ancestors were. Slave owners. I'm sure that was would have been something that Ava wouldn't have been too thrilled about. No, but um, it was pretty but, common in this area at the time. Um, Unfortunately, it's it's part of dark history of, of that's exactly right. Our area. It, it yeah. just is. Um, anyone who traces their family back very far in the South, myself included, uh, you know, we have ancestors who were slave owners, and um, it's just it's the truth of the matter. It's history. Yeah. Um, but Edith Flowers was, was kind of interesting. Uh, Edith Jordan. I'm sorry. Uh, she was what Ava's great 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 grandmother. Uh, she sent a note of apology to the courthouse when her husband died. This was in 1793 uh, because all her family members were all down with sickness and uh, unable to probate the will. Um, so it was a little bit delayed. Uh, but she allegedly, when she died a number of years later, allegedly gave all of her slaves to one granddaughter so they would not be separated. But there was a big court case. She ch apparently changed her mind. Uh, some of the other children may have found out that she was, or some of the other heirs may have found out this one granddaughter was getting all the slaves, and maybe they protested. But anyway, oh, but, but there was a secret bill uh, that was discovered that actually did divide the slaves, which was a common thing. Oh. Um, sometimes children were taken away from their right. mothers, and all kinds of horrible things went on when someone would die and all the slaves were divided. Sometimes they were just put on the auction block and just sold to people, you know, wow. and taken, um, you know, in different directions. But a lot of, uh, there were some cases of, of slave owners who did try to keep their slaves together, keep them <laughs> together as family units. One of her, um, I guess, more well-known relatives was General Joshua Barnes. 
He's considered the father of Wilson County. He was a cousin of Cynthia Batts Gardner, and it was, they were related on the, the Flowers Jordan side of the family. He was a state senator from Edgecombe County, and he actually pushed through the bill to create Edgecombe County. I mean, excuse me, to uh, create Wilson County in 1855. He never served in a war, but uh, was called general because he commanded the local militia. Oh. And in the cemetery in Wilson County, I don't know the name of the cemetery. Um, anyway, the, the old cemetery in Wilson County, he has a huge monument. Um, it looks like the Washington Monument. I was just going to yeah. say, it, it kind of, it, it does look like the Washington it is a, Monument. I think it's the largest grave marker I have ever seen. I mean, it's just... Huge obelisk, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's as tall as a tree. It's just amazing. Um, anyway, so I guess he was a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. But he was a cousin of Ava's father. And, uh, of course, I was able to locate the gravestone of Grandma Matilda Dilda. So. Our favorite. <laughs> <laughs> right, and her maiden name was Cobb, so she was related well, to Cobb. Well, bless her. She had to take that, that name. <laughs> the Cobb family, which is a really prominent family in Virginia and Tidewater uh, area of North Carolina. Okay. On her mother's side, we really don't know a whole lot about them. The, uh, her mother was a baker. Uh, they lived in a little area that was known as Baker Town, so they must have been very prominent oh, okay. uh, in what is now Wilson County. It was originally uh, in Edgecombe County. Let's see, um, her grandfather, Baker, uh, Ava's great-grandfather, James Baker, Jim Baker, was a uh, Confederate soldier. He served in the North Carolina ca uh, Confederate Cavalry along with his brother, and they eventually um, lived uh, near Saratoga in Pitt County, not too far from Greenville. And that's the family uh, cemetery. Uh, his, his farm was the family cemetery location where Little Roman uh, was buried. Okay. On her mother's side, she's also related to the Forbes family. Uh, wow. That's a real prominent Scottish family. Yeah. So that's where the Scottish connection yeah. com comes in. We think, uh, we did uh, find out that she had um, a great-great-grandfather named Arthur Forbes who lived to age 97, and he died in 1869, age 97, um, in Edgecombe County. We think he was the nephew of a revolutionary patriot named Arthur Forbes, who was uh, really prominent in Pitt County. Well, that's some real longevity. How, mm -hmm. how, how long did people, what was the lifespan back then? Oh, probably 60s or, I mean, I'm, I'm almost 53. Um, Back then, when someone was in their 50s, they were pretty much really over the hill. I mean, they were past, I mean, if you had worked since you were a young person, hard labor, you know, on the farm, uh, you were pretty much worn out by the time you were in your 50s. I know I don't look like that. No, not at all. <laughs> but 50 was old back then. Yeah. Okay, uh, it really was. So he, and, he um, has twice the lifespan of so the average person. It's, it's phenomenal that someone lived to be 97 back then. So good, that, good genes, I There guess. were some good genes, apparently. <laughs> Uh, but he was uh, this uh, uncle that we think uh, is related to um, Ava's great-great-grandpa, Arthur Forbes, uh, was uh, real prominent in the Revolutionary War. He was the mem a member of Pitt County's Committee of Secrecy, Intelligence, and Observation in 1775. They called them safety committees. He was also a delegate. After the war, he was a delegate to North Carolina's Federal Constitutional Convention in 1788. Okay. Very prominent. And the Forbes family is very prominent. Of course, everyone's heard of Forbes magazine. magazine. And there's Forbes list. There, um, quite possibly a family connection there, but I'm okay. not able to prove it. Now, this one's funny. Um, <laughs> I love the title. She, uh, <laughs> yes. She had an ancestor named Vickers, the last name Vickers, um, Sarah Vickers. And I, I titled this slide uh, Vickers and Lickers. Uh, Sarah Vickers made a will in 1781, leaving the plantation to eldest son Abraham as his father, Ralph, who died in 1762, had intended. And likewise, everything else that I have in my possession in this world, only for my son, John Vickers, to have the use of my still, to still his own liquors, or <coughs> distill his own liquors, etc., as long as the two brothers live convenient together. And John was Ava's ancestor. In his own will, John's will, uh, was probated in 1784, and he directed in the will that the still not be sold, but valued. And I've, I've been puzzled by that. Uh, you could have two different connotations there, but valued. I think what it meant was that they needed to evaluate it, for the dollar amount. Okay. So that would be part of his inheritance, I guess. So, Interesting. But anyway. 
So they were into their liquor and their stills. So, and at least on the liquor been, side of the venue. Moonshine or moonshine whiskey, brandy. I mean, what what was popular around here? I know corn well, liquor. Way back then, you know, people just made liquor, and there were no taxes or you know no issues with it really. It was after the Revolutionary War, you know, during the George Washington days, and when they were trying to um, start America <laughs> and create revenue streams. Uh, that's when this whole liquor tax stuff came about, and. Uh, that's when they had the Whiskey Rebellion. And, uh, in North Carolina, they didn't even send troops to North Carolina when there was, you know, to, to, uh, to, try, to, that to try to enforce that law. <laughs> uh, they sent troops to Pennsylvania, but they, they knew it was a lost cause. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be another war all over again, I guess. Um, anyway, that's, that's a whole other story. Uh, well, fine. <laughs> you can see where this could go in a lot of different ways. Places, you know, I and mean, you can find a tangent that's very interesting, and and further research would need to be done about it. I think it's really fun. Uh, every family has at least one, or usually numerous, um, illegitimate okay. connections. <laughs> and um, let's see, uh, there was, uh, and it was on that Vickers side of the family. Yes, um, Sarah Vickers, the still the liquor still lady, um, had a granddaughter named uh, Millicent Harrell. And her, her parents were not married, um, so she went by the name Harold. But her father's name was actually John Webb, and he apparently acknowledged this illegitimate child. Uh, he remarried and had his own you know, set of children by his wife, um, but he did have um, this child named Millicent Harold, who was, uh, let's see, Ava's great-grandmother. Oh, wow. She married um, the Forbes. She married Mr. Forbes, uh, Hiram. Forbes. Um, anyway, but we, we do actually have a photograph of John Webb yeah. and his wife, and his home, I understand, is still standing near a little place called Macclesfield in wow. Wilson County, and that's where a lot of Ava's family came yes, from, Wilson on the Baker's County. side, but Macclesfield. It's, it's a little incorporated town. I don't even know if it has a stoplight, but that's, <laughs> uh, it may, but uh, that's where a lot of Ava's family lived, and I'm sure she has cousins to All stay them, yeah. around Macclesfield. Uh, the Webbs uh, was one family. And, of course, Mary Elizabeth Winstead uh, was a, a distant cousin. She was born in Rocky Mount, but um, grew out west. But um, has um, played in quite a few things, uh, including, let's see, she won a 2013 Daytime Emmy for The Beauty Inside. Uh, but she's Ken Day, but we think on that side of the family. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's the end of my slideshow. So, um, how, if how fun has any... is that? And I, that's really great. I'm sure we have lots of questions for you if you're ready, if you feel yeah. up to the task. If anybody has a question, I'll take a gander. Okay, wonderful. Um, so, we have lots of questions, don't we? Well, we have uh, several comments here. Okay. One that is funny of mentioning because it's from Ashby. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a, ch a children's book series. Mr. the Dilda goes to the zoo. <laughs> 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 Okay, let's get. Let's, <laughs> thank you, Ashby. I, I I really have to say, you know, she took that name, so at least you know she knew what she was getting into. I gotta say. <laughs> and then there's one yeah. from uh, Lindsay Coley. It's I've always wondered if I could be related to Ava. My grandmother on my dad's side maiden name is Baker, just like Ava's mother, and we're also from North Carolina. So well, yeah, it'd be really possible from what Todd's saying. You'd, you'd, but you'd, what would she need to do to find out more about that? Well, you always, with genealogy, you always start with yourself and you mm -hmm. trace backward. Right. Uh, you go back as far as you can go. Don't ever start with, you know, an ancestor or a suspected ancestor from 200 years ago and, right. and try to go forward. Uh, you'll waste a lot of resources and time. On well, that. and I feel like a yeah. lot of our so, fans yeah. that, that do believe that they're related really do st start there. So I'm glad mm -hmm. that you're telling them, look, yeah. start with yourself and, and move go backward. backwards. Backwards, because right. you can establish those, stri mm -hmm. those ties as being the strongest, and records are better kept um, the closer to us that we go. So, yeah. But if you trace back um, the Baker family into Wilson, Edgecombe counties, North Carolina, uh, chances are you're related to Ava. Yeah. So I think most of the bakers in that area. Now there are other bakers, you know, clans of bakers in other places. There are a lot of bakers in Johnston County mm -hmm. that, uh, so far as I know, are not related to um, Ava's mother's right. family. So. And real quick, let's go over Ava's modern lineage because Ava does not have any direct descendants. We are very certain.
written about that. Yes, there, there are people that have claimed that, and um, I, we have done DNA tests, and right. um, absolutely, this is not something we do, you know, lightly or anything. And I mean, you would really have to have a pretty strong, strong claim for something like that. But um, you know, she she did not have children. She she, she wrote in her book that she did not have them, um, and uh, really, the the people who um, inherited her legacy, really, you know, her memories and carrying them on are people like you met Ava Carroll, who was um, our last guest um, on our Periscope. Um, she was Ava's uh, great niece because her grandmother was Ava's sister, Elsie May. So there were, Ava had uh, three sisters. The, the You had uh, Bappy, who was the oldest. She was 19 years older. Right. Then Elsie May. Yeah, Bappy didn't have any children. Bappy did not have any children either. Um, right. Elsie May did have children, and um, Ava Carroll, who you guys have already met, is is her descendant. Um, and then you have uh, Myra uh, Gardner Pierce, and uh, she ended up marrying and settling in Winston Salem. And um, we're, her her descendants are also um, well known to us and, and heavily involved. Um, and you have a Ava. Well, you have Jack, and then Ava. Um, and Melvin right. Jack uh, Gardner was, uh, he, he also did not have children. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So um, really there are, um, Inez. oh, Inez, I'm sorry, four Inez. sisters. I don't know yeah. why I said three. Inez, Mary Edna Grantham, who some of you may be aware of from pictures that we've shared, um, Inez was after Elsie May, but before Myra. That's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, apologies about that. Um, and uh, maybe we can get uh, Mary Edna on here one of these days. That's my that's my goal yeah, because she's be she's absolutely lovely um, and uh, and she has a lot of fun stories as well. But um, they have their own uh, children and we try and keep them private unless they and then unless they okay us to share things because uh, you know the, their privacy is important. But. Um, there are no direct descendants of Ava, so it would be people who are related by marriage or twice removed, mm -hmm. thrice removed, that well, kind of thing. She does have a number of cousins around. Mm -hmm. um, she does have a first cousin. Um, I haven't heard anything from him in, in the last couple of years, but she did have a cousin in his 90s who was still around. Yeah. Who lives in Fountain. So. Okay. Um, yeah, there's still quite a, quite a few relatives around. Yeah, absolutely. For extended family. And people that have forgotten it. History, you know, like I asked Todd, did she know she was related to the Bell Witch? You know, possibly not. You know, a lot of people may not realize that they are related. So, like Todd says, if you really think that you might have, um, you know, and are interested in finding out, um, that that's really how you begin it. You start with yourself, and then you go and uh, places like the Heritage Center, and and they can guide you further. I think Ashby has come up with a good fundraising idea for the for, museum. Mm, the, a line of children's books, books yeah. about Matilda. Matilda. Dilla. I think it's great. We, we hereby copyright it right now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have another question for Todd? Uh, this is a good, it's actually a pretty interesting story from uh, Sarah Karab. It, my family is one of the founding families of Wilson, North Carolina. I moved, down, I moved mom down to Florida, and to our surprise, she lived in an assistant living next door to another resident, Mr. Archibald Webb. Born 1928, also formerly of Wilson, North Carolina. He spoke fond fondly of attending the country club dance on the weekend so he could dance with Ava. Oh, wow. how so, fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, if his name is Webb, probably related. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I mean, you, you heard a little bit about your ancestor. You, you might know more than we do, which would be kind of fun to add to, you yeah. know? Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And then some people... Uh, enjoying watching it. Okay. We also have some people from Ireland that are watching. Oh, wow, so. Ireland. Oh, wonderful. Cool. There is a museum in Ireland that has, I believe they're in Galway, that has some of her um, her clothing. So, uh, And I've been corresponding mm -hmm. with them. Wow. You know, maybe it's not Galway. Gosh, I'm going to have to, it's been a while since I've talked to them, but I, I, mm -hmm. I do have it on my list to go visit next time we're across the pond. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. How so, fun. So. Yep, that's all. That's all we see right now. So just in, people are enjoying the content. The content, so. wonderful, yeah. great, love it. Um, well, uh, Todd, tell us a little bit uh, about uh, the Heritage Center because it's not just an archive; it's also a museum. And what's going on there right now? Okay. Yes, the Heritage Center uh, is located in the former uh, First Citizens Bank office just a, a block from the Ava Gardner Museum right down the and right on the first floor we have a small exhibit hall it's not quite as big as the 
the Ava Gardner Museum is fairly small, so we rotate our exhibits at least once a year. Right now we have an exhibit on uh, Johnston County's Lebanese immigrant families who came in the early 1900s. And um, it's, it's a fascinating story about how people came from another continent not knowing the language, but they um, adapted and, um, you know, had really made a name for themselves. Uh, there are quite a few of the families uh, who were still around. And um, so um, if you're close by and uh, can stop by, we'd love to have you see our exhibit. On our third floor, we have our reading room, which is the research facility. That's where you can go and um, do research on Ancestry.com. We also have... Uh, all the newspapers, a lot of old records on microfilm, and uh, some are digitized, but most things are not yet, contrary to what people believe. Yeah. <laughs> everything is not digitized, everything is not accessible online. Uh, you have to go to libraries um, and, and archives yeah. and, and, and to find a lot of this information, like the um, little obituary or death notice that I read yeah. for, for Little Raymond. You won't find that online. You have to go to the microfilm or, or our files at Johnston County Heritage Center. We've, we have a lot of information on different families. That collection was started 40, excuse me, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. in 1967, in the public library. So since that time, people have come from all over the United States and other countries even, uh, doing research on family history, and uh, they have shared their research with us. And so we have those uh, that information in files. And one thing I forgot to mention, which I thought was really interesting, when um, I started working in the public library and their local history genealogy, collection when I was a teenager, actually when I was 15 years old, and I worked part-time and on Saturdays through high school and college, and I remember, um, I guess it's when I was in college, uh, a couple came in one day, it was an older gentleman and a young lady uh, who was from Brazil, and she spoke very little English, but um, she had been told that her grandfather was Ava Gardner's uncle, and that he left this area and went and settled in Brazil like way, way back when, and we've not been able to, do, to find yeah, his, name. his name. His name was Eduardo or Edward. We have his picture. We have a, a, somewhere a picture of his gravestone, uh, but we've never been able to find a record anywhere of an uncle Edward, uh -huh. but that's what was handed down in her family. It's Interesting. Just, uh, so people are that, coming to see if they, um, if they do have that connection. Right, and um, Tracy Thompson actually has been in contact with, with this lady. Uh, in, in the last few years, and we, we're still working on that, trying to make that connection. Yeah. Um, now, it's free to come to the Heritage Center, right? Yes. Okay. We're a county agency, so we're just like the public library. Uh, our exhibits and our uh, research facility are all uh, admission free, so please come and visit us. Yeah. What are the hours and days that you guys are open? We're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5. We're closed on Sundays. And they do have their own Facebook, too. We'll make sure to promote it on ours so that you can you can get that uh, connection and follow. They share um, photographs and interesting trivia um, on a daily basis as well, I believe, or at least a weekly. Yes, we, we try to. Yeah. You know, we're not as regular as we would like to be. <laughs> we have all, I'm the only full-time staff person. Everybody yeah. else is part-time, so we, you know, we do what we can Absolutely. with the resources with it, that we have. And keep that in mind if you guys have questions for Todd later on, you know, that he, he is one person and he's he's definitely got some other stuff going on, but uh, he, as you can see, he's, he's very excited to see where connections are. Um, one last thing I wanted to mention is that you just had a, another book come out, right? Now, Todd's, Todd's been an author of, of a previous book on Johnston County uh, history. Right, I've done several um, local interest books. Yeah, I've done several books on Wake County and Johnston County. History. The, the latest project I was involved in was as editor, not the author, but okay. editor of an architectural history of Johnston County. It okay. just came out in December. It's a beautiful book. Yes, nice, it is. Nice coffee table book. And the Brogdon teacherage is in there. So Wonderful. So Ava's former home. home. Yeah, absolutely. It's in there, right. And uh, both of those are on sale at the, at the uh, Heritage Center, right? Yeah, the and I believe they're on Amazon as well. Uh, no, online, no, no, not, not the architectural. Not but Not the one yet, you, maybe. the other one you wrote. Right. We've also done some little pictorial histories called Images of America or Images Revisited. Um, and they have pictures of Ava also okay. and her family members. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Do we have any anything else? Nope. Nope. Just okay. people tuning in from well, all over. So. I want to thank you again so much for coming, Todd. It looks like people were really enjoying this, and I think it was something different. And I think it was really fun because it's... Um, you know, you and I work together so closely, and, um, you know, passing of the torch and, and everything like that. It's funny how we still work together and still connect, and uh, 
I think that that's absolutely wonderful. So I'm so glad that we could bring it to our fans, and uh, I'm sure you'll probably get some feedback from this as well, as I'm sure we will, and, uh, and perhaps we can have you on again. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're going to go ahead and close down. Um, we'll try and get this up on YouTube as, as soon as possible, and um, we'll try and do a few more of these. I know it's been a while since we have, but uh, we've been very busy, as you know, and uh, now we're, we're kind of getting back into things. We'd like to, to bring you guys some more history. So. We oh. have one, one, one last, last tidbit. Um, Yvonne, who's watching from Ireland, uh, wanted to know if uh, Ava ever visited Ireland. Yes, uh, oh, she I'm did. So yes, she uh, actually when uh, she from Knights of the Round Table, 1953, they um, moved. Uh, England was getting too expensive on the production costs, and they moved uh, down to Ireland. And it was said that they got uh, the, the the actual cavalry, the actual government military cavalry, to become extras. Uh, for like the battle scenes and they had to pay them a little more than like a pint of Guinness a piece or something. Uh, <laughs> um, but it was absolutely miserable when she was down there because it rained. Um, and so she remembered it being not the greatest experience in Ireland. But I believe she did go back. Um, I think for, she visited the Houstons the, there too. Yeah, they she, lived in Ireland. Yeah, absolutely. So she had some other more pleasant experiences. But I believe that was her first experience in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Yep. All right. Wonderful, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.